If we ever find life in the universe, it will be the worst news humanity has ever received. It was a normal night of observation for the astronomers at the Mullard Radio Astronomy Observatory in Cambridge, United Kingdom. The astronomer analyzing the data, Jocelyn Bell Burnell, noticed something strange. One of the regions of the sky seemed to vibrate, increasing and decreasing the emitted radiation at very precise intervals of 1.3373 seconds. The region was small, so what was being observed could only be a point source, like a distant star. Faced with an unknown phenomenon, Jocelyn noted the evidence on a piece of paper that would go down in history. Stars were too large to rotate and emit such regular signals so quickly. And when trying to imagine possible human origins for that signal, like interference from other devices, the evidence pointed to it coming from outside the solar system. The source of the signals was nicknamed LGMU, or Little Green Man, a reference to the possible extraterrestrial origin of the signal. But it didn't take long for the extraterrestrial hypothesis for the signals to be proven wrong. What Jocelyn Bell Burnell discovered that night was an extraordinary type of star, the pulsars. It's not hard to imagine why the extraterrestrial origin of pulsars crossed some people's minds. Astronomy has advanced greatly since then, and today we can see what we believe to be the first galaxies in the universe, formed just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. But no matter where we look in the universe, we remain immersed in what is known as the Great Silence. We live in a universe so diverse, so rich in stars and planets, that life should be extremely common. But what we hear and see is exactly the opposite. It is the purest silence. It is the complete lack of any evidence of life outside Earth. And that is the Fermi paradox. We live in a universe that should be teeming with life, but we only find it here on Earth. So, where is everybody? As far as we know today, we are alone in the universe. It's not for lack of trying. The scientific search for evidence of life beyond Earth has gone on for over 40 years. In my personal view, the existence of life beyond Earth is simply a matter of mathematics. We inhabit a rocky planet that exists around a very common type of star in the universe. We can even go further. There is nothing special about the place where we are in the cosmos. In our galaxy alone, there are up to 400 billion stars. And recent research shows that it is likely that almost all of them have planets around them, which puts the estimated number of planets in our galaxy alone at at least 400 billion. But that number is probably much higher. However, I chose to be pessimistic here. Earth is just one world among 400 billion. Do you really imagine that we are so special that life only emerged once in our galaxy on one out of 400 billion possible worlds? If you answered yes, let me try to help you understand better how big a billion is. If you started counting one number per second, it would take you 11 and a half days to reach the first million. But I recommend not stopping the count because you still have almost 32 years to reach the first billion. Despite many possible worlds, we still do not have convincing evidence that life exists outside Earth. Today I want to discuss one of the possible answers to the Fermi paradox, the Great Filter. And what is the Great Filter? There are several ways to explain the Great Filter, but the way I like the most is to think of it as a kind of probability barrier. The central idea is that there are steps or events throughout the evolution of life that are so rare and unlikely that this is why we do not see signs of another intelligent civilization in the universe. Moreover, the Great Filter is one of the only answers to the Fermi Paradox in which humanity is not a winner simply by existing. The reason is that we cannot know where the next filter is until we pass through it. It may still be in the future, waiting for us. And to understand the consequences of facing a Great Filter, we need to understand what a Great Filter is. The best definition I have ever seen came from an article by philosopher Nick Bostrom, the same one who suggested the famous idea that we live in a simulation. According to him, there are two criteria that make an event a good candidate for the Great Filter. The first criterion is that this event can only have happened once in history. And to understand this condition, we must not forget our main goal, which is to find events that are extremely unlikely, almost impossible. It makes sense that if an event is extremely unlikely, then it should only happen once during the history of the evolution of life. Photosynthesis was responsible for the great oxidation event that nearly wiped out life on planet Earth 2.4 billion years ago, but also made our atmosphere rich in oxygen, which in the future would be a condition for our existence. 
At first glance, photosynthesis seems a strong candidate for the great filter, but it emerged independently more than once in the history of the Earth, though via different ways. Using the first criterion, photosynthesis isn't a good candidate for the great filter. But what about you? Can you imagine any other candidate for the great filter by looking only at the first criterion? This brings us to the second criterion, which states that the event we are analyzing needs to take a long time to happen, even if the conditions are favorable. The idea here is that passing through a great filter is so unlikely that we indeed need a lot of time, which means many chances for an event to actually happen. Nothing is better than showing the two criteria working together to help identify possible great filters in the history of life on Earth. What if the first great filter was life emerging? We need data. Earth formed about 4.5 billion years ago, and this age also coincides with the period when the solar system became quite similar to what it is today. About 200 million years later, conditions became favorable for life to emerge here on Earth. And we know this through geological records. But it was indeed only 600 million years after that when life actually emerged on our planet. I must make a side note. This time estimate only goes as far as our fossil records and geological markers. Life may have taken less time to emerge, but this is the furthest back in time we can go. Knowing this, what can we say about the emergence of life? First, let's look at the first criterion. The event can only have happened once in history. As far as we know, life on Earth only emerged once in history. Putting it in other words, abiogenesis actually happened only once in the history of our planet. There have been numerous attempts to recreate the conditions we imagine existed on Earth in the past in the laboratory in the hope of repeating the same process of abiogenesis, the emergence of life from non-living matter. All have failed. The closest we have come to replicating the emergence of life is still quite far off. We have only managed to create some molecules that we know are the building blocks of life. And more. All living organisms on Earth today seem to be descendants of a common ancestor, which only reinforces the idea that life emerged only once on our planet. What conclusion can we draw from this? The emergence of life on Earth is a good candidate for the great filter, per the first criterion. But what about the second criterion, which states that the event needs to take a long time to happen even after conditions become favorable? Again, as far as we know, there was a 600 million year gap between the conditions for life on Earth becoming favorable and life actually emerging. And this time scale of about half a billion years is exactly what we need to satisfy the second criterion. Even with favorable conditions, it seems that life on Earth took a long time to emerge. So is it possible that the emergence of life is the first great filter we have faced? Another strong candidate for the great filter is the emergence of complex cells, eukaryotes. When life first appeared on Earth, it was prokaryotic, a type of simple cell where one of the main characteristics is the DNA spread out inside them. It took around 1.8 billion years of life on our planet for the first eukaryotic cells to emerge, which now had DNA inside a well-defined nucleus. And as far as we know, this evolutionary leap happened only once. But what about you? Can you identify any other event that might be a good candidate for the great filter? Type it here in the comments. If I could choose the primary point I would like you to remember after watching this video, it would be the following. The great filter hypothesis resolves the Fermi paradox by suggesting that we are alone in the universe for one of two reasons. The first is that we are the only intelligent civilization lucky enough to have passed through one or more events that are extremely unlikely to occur such as the emergence of life itself. The second is that we have not yet passed the great filter and we are only alone in the universe because our time has not yet come. The odds are definitely not in our favor. All the other civilizations are already gone. Which one do you think is right? But we still have a loose end I would like to discuss in this video, which is the sentence I mentioned at the beginning. If one day we find life in the universe, it will be the worst news humanity has ever received. To understand what this phrase means, we first need to understand the great filter. Discovering life beyond Earth seems like a wonderful idea. Imagine the amount of knowledge we could exchange with another intelligent civilization. Do they have religion? Or at what stage is their science? Have they already discovered how to travel at speeds close to the speed of light? What few people stop to think about is that there is another possibility, finding life on other bodies in the solar system. And this news would have dark implications for humanity. First, let's imagine that one day we discover fossils of simple life, prokaryotic microorganisms, somewhere else in the solar system. 
this news would not be good. To understand why, remember the criteria for the great filter. The event can only happen once, and even with favorable conditions, it should take a long time to occur. Discovering that life emerged two or more times just in our solar system would indicate that the emergence of life might not be a good candidate for the great filter. Who knows, it might arise anywhere that has the right conditions, whether in a frozen ocean on one of Jupiter's moons or on ancient Mars. But if life is so common, then why do there not seem to be other intelligent civilizations in the universe? What this means for us is that the Great Filter was probably after the emergence of life. But the worst news of all would be finding fossils of complex life, such as eukaryotic cells. The news would get increasingly worse as the complexity of life increased. This would highly likely place the Great Filter more in our future. Maybe our biggest challenge is yet to come in the near future. Do you think we are completely and fully prepared? Thank you very much and see you next time.